Hello there, thanks for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard. What a great early R&B piece this is, which dates to 1952. Woo! Man, if you found this video, you know about Roy Brown, and you probably know about Roy Milton. What a beauty. This is a Globe poster out of Baltimore, manufactured. Jumbo, originally 22 by 28 inches. As you can see up here in the top, though, the venue information has been trimmed, maybe in half, so there's a small white strip where there normally should be a large white strip where the venue information, the, you know, the, the city, the date, and so forth would be printed in. Matter of fact, I always happen to have something handy like that, and here's this very poster from 1952 from a, a photo of it from Conway, South Carolina, and that of course has the venue information intact and all the date and everything printed in there, whereas this is a little bit of a poor cousin but still looks fantastic on my wall because it has all the colors and the artists and everything fully intact, just not tied down to one exact date, that's all. So. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it's, it's just a great post-war, pre-rock and roll rhythm and blues, I guess you can call it. And one of my favorite aspects of this poster is the uh, influence on early Elvis Presley. And uh, Elvis's Sun Records career is probably my favorite phase of his entire life. And that's true with a lot of rock and roll people. They just can't beat those Sun Records things. And um, so up top right there you have Roy Brown with Good Rockin'. And that's because Roy Brown wrote and had a hit with Good Rockin' Tonight. I guess they just dropped the Tonight for lack of room on the concert poster, but I don't need to tell you that that was Elvis Presley's second single on Sun Records, and it's just a, you know, not to editorialize too much, but what a killer record that was, and Scotty Moore with a blazing guitar solo. Good Rockin' Tonight is so important. And again, Roy Brown wrote it and had a big hit with it, and uh, you might recall that the chorus goes, um, you know, Tonight I'll be your mighty, mighty man. And so Roy Brown called his group the Mighty Mighty Men. Isn't that fun? That's really cool. So, um, so uh, yeah, Roy, Roy Brown actually, you know, I, I've dwelled on that one hit, but heck, he had 14 top 10 rhythm and blues hits from the late 40s into the late 50s. So he was really prolific in that area. Then there's Roy Milton. He was no slouch either. In fact, how about 19 top 10 rhythm and blues hits from a little bit earlier phase the mid-40s into the early 50s, and there he is. And where does his early Elvis influence come in? Well, just check out a few seconds of Roy Milton's hit from 1946 called Milton's Boogie. That's all right, baby, that's all right for you. That's all right, baby, that's all right for you. That's all right, mama, go steal your way. There you go. Now, of course, all music historians know that Arthur Big Boy Crudup wrote That's All Right and released it on a single, and that's given credit as, as uh, probably rightfully so, as, as turning it, um, Elvis onto the song. But, but Crudup's single came out the same year as Milton's Boogie, and Crudup's version of That's All Right, his own song, didn't chart. Milton's Boogie went to number four, so got a heck of a lot more airplay. So who's to say Elvis didn't hear that snippet of That's All Right inside the Roy Milton song and was equally compelled to record it for his very first Sun single, Sun 209, which changed history, of course, starting in July of 1954. But anyway, back to this 1952 concert poster. It does say Triple Attraction, doesn't it? You notice that up in the upper left, Triple Attraction above the Roy, and there's Camille Howard down at the bottom. And she was very much involved with Roy Milton's band. She was a pianist in Roy Milton's band, one of the solid senders, if you will. you got to love that name of, uh, see, underneath Milton, the solid senders there. you just got to love that. And uh, she was uh, also a vocalist with her own trio, and Milton played in her trio. So as I said, they were very interchangeable. And Camille Howard had a couple of top ten hits herself. So she very much earns the position of rounding out the trio of the triple attraction. So. There you have it, a great, as I said, post-war, pre-rock and roll, R&B piece from the early 50s, a beautiful tour blank. Great any way you can get it, better with venue information at the top, it's still a real beauty, and I hope you enjoyed seeing it, because it sure was fun to share it. Thanks for coming by, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.